in the 8-bit microcontroller world, the Atmel AVR, which is on the Arduino, and a microchip pick line seem to be very popular. Now when Parallax came out with the basic stamp using the PIC microcontroller, there was a huge following and the PIC microcontroller became uh, pretty popular. Now there are other uh, vendors making popular microcontrollers like Motorola, which is Freescale, the 68HC11, uh, Texas Instruments, which is a launch pad, uh, the MSP430, which is a low power 16-bit microcontroller, and there's a Cypress PSOC, there's the Parallax Propeller, which is a multi-core microcontroller, and also x86, which is still around and, and still useful. Now I'm not going to get into who is the best choice, I'll leave it up to you, it's just like buying a car, you know, do you want to buy a Corvette or a Honda Civic? So you pick the one that's, uh, that you're most comfortable with, you look at all the features, in the future, I could see ARM microcontrollers dominating when the Internet of Things becomes mainstream. So I could see cheap 32-bit ARM Cortex microcontrollers uh, for under a dollar. So there will be wireless sensors everywhere. There will always be a spot for 8-bit microcontrollers. So in this video, I want to look at the 8051. Now the 8051 has been around for a while. It's a real workhorse. It was originally manufactured by Intel in 1980. Now Intel has stopped manufacturing the 8051, but other vendors have taken the core and embedded it into their own product. Now they've upgraded the 8051 from the original core, so we'll look at some of the vendors and their data sheets and see what kind of upgrades they have done for the 8051. Okay, here's the data sheet for the 8051 device. Now this is a block diagram of the part number CRD89C51. AD1T, which is made by Cyrod. Now this microcontroller comes in a 40-pin dip package, which is great for breadboarding. The operating voltages come in 5 volt or 3.3 volts. The power consumption is 20 milliamps active, 6 milliamps idle, and 50 microamps in its power down mode. Now you can clock this microcontroller at 25 megahertz, which is one clock per machine cycle. And if you look down, we can see the CPU block there. That's the 8051 that's embedded in this microcontroller. Now, if we go back up to the top left, we can look at some features. You can see the reset pin, reset pin which is fed into a MAX 810. That's a maximum reset monitor, which is actually embedded in this chip. So that's your brownout detector and the power on reset. Uh, the next block is the UART, and there's actually two UARTs, two RS-232 ports. Uh, the next block is kind of hard to read, but those are two operational amplifiers. So if you've got any analog signals you want to amplify, you can feed them into these op amps, and the output of the op amps could actually be fed into the ADC uh, internally. Or you can configure the op amps to be voltage comparators. Now the next block is your pulse width modulation, and there's four ports there. Uh, the next block is your ADC, your analog to digital converters. And there's eight 10-bit analog to digital channels. Uh, the next block is your I squared C and your SPI, which are two synchronous protocols. So there's two ports there. And your RTC, your real-time clock. Now if we look on the right-hand side, we can see the GPIO. There's six ports, port 0 to 5, and those are 8-bit ports. And below there are timers, so there's three timers on this chip. Now if we look at the flash memory, there's 64K bytes. That's quite a bit of memory. You could do a pretty big application. Now the flash, the flash memory that you do not use in your program, you could actually configure them to be EEPROM. Now if we look at the RAM, there's 256 bytes of RAM. That's your standard RAM for the special function registers. And then there's 2K bytes of RAM. That's your expanded RAM for user programming. There's MDU, a multiple on divide unit, a watchdog timer, interrupt circuitry. Now there's, a, there's actually an ICP, an in-circuit programmer. So this chip has an onboard on bootloader. So if you have a hex file, you could upload the hex file through the serial port and the ICP will actually program it into flash. Now if you look at the left, you can see uh, the two pins for the crystal, the crystal oscillator that, that clocks the CPU. Now if there's no need for accurate timing in your program, you don't need the crystal, you could actually use the internal RC clock. 
So that's basically the block diagram there. This is the updated 8051 microcontroller. And it's very clean, very simple, uh, easy to master. And I like programming in assembler language on this microcontroller. So next we'll look at some assembler code which I have written for this uh, microcontroller. Okay, here's a program written in assembler for the 8051 microcontroller. This is my Hello World program, which blinks an LED and sends a string of text out the serial port every second. Now, this is a very simple program. I'll go through it quickly. So basically, we see here a subroutine called VDelay right here. And VDelay is a one millisecond timing loop. And if we do that 1,000 times, we'll get a one second delay. So by calling the subroutine delay, we'll get a one second delay. So if we move down to the next subroutine called chip init, init UART will initialize the serial port to 9600 baud. The next line will clear the LED, will shut off the LED. Uh, the next subroutine is send character, which will send one character out the serial port. The next subroutine is called dot string or print string and you can see here it's using send character that we saw above in in the in the subroutine dot string or print string and it'll print string until it sees a null so the next subroutine is basically our main program and basically the first thing it does chip in it which initializes the serial port to 9600 baud then it goes from begin to again. That's our that's our loop. That's our infinite loop. That's our main program. So the first thing it does is toggle the LED. It calls the subroutine print string, which will print this string here. And then a carriage return, then a line feed, and then a null, which means end of string. Then it will call the subroutine delay, which is a one second delay, and then go back to begin and repeat it all over again. So we'll run between begin and again, that's our main program, which will, which will blink the LED and send out the string every one second. Now a lot of people shy away from assembler, but once you get into it, it's not that bad. So next we'll look at the 8051 on a breadboard running this program. Okay, here's my 8051 microcontroller on my breadboard, and I'm running my hello program. You can see the LED blink in there every second. Now the 8051 chip there is labeled Ramtron, but Cyrod bought out Ramtron's microcontroller line, so that's just an old chip. Now the chip beside it is an RS-232 interface chip from TTL level to true RS-232 because I was running it on an old laptop with a RS-232 RS uh, port. But in this case you don't need half the circuitry. You could use an FTDI chip, a USB to serial, and just connect it into the serial port of the 8051 and away you go. Now this 8051 has been around for a long time so there's a lot of free tools out, out there, a lot of simulators and compilers and a lot of code and tutorials. So this is just another option you might want to look at when picking a microcontroller for your project.